New guidelines that will be released by the National Parks Board and Parks will not impose any restrictions on the use of aversive animal training devices, including electric shock collars. In a written parliamentary answer, Minister for National Development Desmond Lee said on Wednesday, April 3, that the guidelines that NPACs will be releasing are meant to highlight the risk of using such devices. The guidelines will also recommend good training practices to be adopted by the community. He was responding to a question from Member of Parliament Louis Ng Pia Pine soon about whether a ban of remote electric shock collars is being considered in the guidelines. Following the release of the guidelines, NPACs will continue to monitor the situation before deciding if further measures are needed, said Mr. Lee on Wednesday. Notwithstanding this, NPACs will continue to investigate and take enforcement action in cases where animal training devices cause unnecessary pain or suffering to animals and to raise awareness on the least intrusive. Minimally aversive approach to animal training. The Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals SPCA has called for a ban on the use of electric shock collars, saying that its use is banned or significantly restricted in several countries such as the Netherlands, Germany and Switzerland. This is not the first time the issue of electric shock collars for training animals has been raised in Parliament. Last month, Mr Ng asked for an update on a study it had conducted on the use of such collars for training animals. Senior Minister of State for National Development Tan Kiet Hao said in Parliament on March 7 he had personally tested a range of electric collars on himself. On a range of 1 to 10. In terms of spectrum, I probably got to about 7, and it was very painful, marks were shown on the skin. But it is not just the pain, but also the shock of it, because the animal or whoever is wearing the electrical collar won't know when the shock is applied. He said. In 2022, the multi-stakeholder rehoming and adoption work group RAWG, comprising NPACs, animal welfare groups, vets and dog trainers, published guidelines to standardize practices in dog rehoming and adoption as well as training and behaviour rehabilitation. MND said in March that NPACs further consulted other stakeholders in the animal community on the use of electric collars and were developing guidelines to highlight the risks of using aversive animal training devices. Ultimately, these guidelines recommend good practices to be adopted by the community and are not meant to be legally enforceable, it said then. It added that when unnecessary pain or suffering is inflicted on animals, it will not hesitate to investigate and take enforcement action under the Animals and Birds Act.